Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and welcome to the jewel in the Formula 1 crown. Yes, the Williams Road to Glory heads to Monaco. If you missed out on the video that went live a couple of days ago, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, today we head to the Principality, 78 laps ahead of us around Formula 1's tightest circuit in a car that is not known for having particularly good downforce levels. How we'll get on tonight is anybody's guess. Drop me a follow over on Twitch so you can come watch the next race out live uh, to on Tuesday night. And yeah, let's do this thing. Oh, a little bit of a wobble there. Come on. Do a Perez, I dare you. I'd rather not, to be honest. The last thing I want is Alvin beefing me. Oh, a bit of a lock-up. Got away with it. Oh! That was nice through the final corner. Up towards the line then. What's the time going to be? Going to be a 1.11.8. So instantly quicker than Lando Norris there. Monaco, I know, is always a bit of a special track. But we will take that as a first run in Q1 as Hamilton would immediately go P2. There we go. Perez quickest then. Oscar Piastri P2. Head of Charles Leclerc. Did uh, Alex make it through? Yes, he did. P15 for Alex Albon. Both Williams into Q2. Much, much slower than he was in Q1. Are oh, we starting to see track temps fall off slightly? Oh, that was close. Oh, oh. We took a lot of speed in, but it's compromised my exit. A bit of a hesitant through to back, but still running all right. Nudge the wall. Oh. Concentration required here. It's so difficult. Especially on a Saturday afternoon. At the final corner, though. Oscar Piastri, 12-1. What are we going to do? It's going to be an 11-4. Holy moly. We are flying around the Monaco Grand Prix. We go P3 in the end. Just behind George and Charles there. Quicker than Max Verstappen. But, I mean, look at that. Five cars, five different teams covered by quarter of a second. Uh, Albon will start the Grand Prix 14th. Ocon just missed out there. Perez just squeezes by and into Q3. Uh, I think... What? Oh, no. Okay, so we're on dry tyres on a wet track for Q3. Yeah, that seems about right, doesn't it? Is anyone else doing this? It definitely is still dry tyres, though. Like, the AI, the game would have basically forced me onto Inters. So, it might be that the track's going to dry out again. Or, this might just be the state that is Q3 here at Monaco. Where no one quite knows what's happening. We've just got to try and nail the lap. It's definitely not intermediate conditions, though. I'll tell you that much. Just from the grip out of turn one. So, Russell, there you go. A 19-8 first lap. Ugh! I've done a center. Ugh! Don't invalidate. I don't know how that didn't invalidate, but we didn't. It's probably the best line I've taken through there all weekend. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. F no! Oh, I just got a wobble and had to correct it. What will the time be? What is the benchmark? Is that going to come back and haunt us here? And are we going to be starting P10 here at Monaco if the track conditions continue to deteriorate? We might be able to go for a second lap, actually. At the final corner up towards the line. It's only going to be a 20.5 anyway. So we need to find more. DRS has been disabled. No, track conditions are getting worse. I've got to set a benchmark, though. We were literally right on the crossover then between drys and inters. But now the game reckons intermediates are going to be the tyre of choice. Still got to see what we can find, though, on this run. Don't hit the wall on the inside of Port here. That's going to find us bags of time, though. Of course, we'll still have optimum grip through the tunnel. Purple, come on, we can do this. Against all the odds. Round on our way through the final couple of corners. Oh, no, I've messed up. I just don't think there's enough grip on the circuit. But we got to get a clean lap on the board. Rounding our way through the final corner. The track's getting worse and worse. The rain's getting worse and worse up towards the line, though. It's going to be a 120.8 there. And that's only good enough for P8 at the moment. Oh, is the track going to dry out again, though? Will we have a chance at the end of the session? I think we might be out in Q... Uh, sorry, well, we're still in Q3, of course, but everyone else here is going out on a set of intermediates right at the end, but I don't think we're going to see any more improvement. And we might be locked in for P8 
here at Monaco, but we're not going to give up that easily. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, we found a bit of time out of turn one. It's always a good start. Definitely feels like the traction's better. You know what? This might not be over yet. It's just about being on the track at the right time. So, it's not going to... Oh, no! I've whacked the wing! That might haunt me. Come on, through the front a couple of corners. I'm going to get one more lap in after this. But up towards the line. We're going to be a second up. Where's this going to put us on the grid, then, at the moment? We go pole position, provisionally. Here on the Monaco Grand Prix, but everyone is getting more and more confident. The four of us that have gone out here on a set of inters, it is now basically a scrap between us for pole position here for the Monaco Grand Prix. But with that wing damage, have we had our glory run? Will we be able to find any more time? How on earth have we found the time? That's what I want to know. Where? How? Yeah, more damage. I can't get that corner right for some reason, but... Yes, yeah, the AI, though, round their way through the final couple of corners here at Monaco. We might be on pole. Will it get ruined by a McLaren? No, it won't. Red Bull can't do it. Mercedes, we're on pole for the Monaco Grand Prix. First ever pole position, then, here in the Williams Road to Glory. One-tenth clear of George Russell, and look how ridiculous that looks. We went fastest on the intermediates. Everyone else was on the dries, and they couldn't do it there. Cool boy, thank you very much for a bit. 15,900 points going to Nahal and a load of other people there. Laserbeam, welcome. Thank you for the follow, mate. Um, so congratulations to all of you that earned some points. Let, let's go double check on that AI. So we're, we're running 110 AI now because Twitch chat is bullying me. But here we go. Monaco Grand Prix time. 78 laps ahead of us. We're going to put it on uh, one stop, but I'm more than happy to go for a two stop if needed. Will we get a safety car today? Let's wait and see. Um, we've, we've bumped it up to 110 toast, so that's good. Russell has joined me on softs. Verstappen, Piastri on mediums, Leclerc on hards. So a lot of indecision there between our top runners, but George and I will be looking to pull away at the start. Right, here we go. Lining up on pole position. We have just got to try and cover George Russell off on the start. That is the goal. Beat George into turn one. This is going to get scary. Five red lights. Lights out and away we go. George Russell's reacting like a cat. No, George, don't do it. Don't do it. We've got to keep the nose there. We haven't. George Russell's had me. No, <laughs> it always happens at Monaco. Right, we've got to go full push mode lap one. We can't lose sight of him. And this is not the track where you want to go full push mode on lap one because that's where mistakes are made. Oh, George. George, George, George. You just left, Williams. Why now are you bullying us? That was not the start we needed, but... We've got to try and hang with him. Leclerc got the jump on Piastri as well. So actually you wonder whether that outside line is actually the better place to start around this venue. Definitely not a racing driver excuse on just lap one. But yeah, get your bottles emojis in chat. That was appalling. Ugh. But we got to settle in. Still 77 more laps. That's... Oh, that's really not good. A warning. Ugh. Woo! Almost dropped it. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Russell's pace is like early on. Because, uh, of course, what you can also attempt to do here is undercut the AI. Like, the undercut is now legitimately possible around this venue. But to be honest, I don't really want to be stuck oh, in his um, dirty air. Because you tend to have a, like, shred the tyres. So we've got to be quite careful in our positioning early on. Locks up, hits the ball immediately. It, it would not surprise me. It really would not surprise me here. Using too much battery as well early on. It's weirdly a track where actually you can't save much charge, but you do. You can use a fair bit. Oh, 
a little bit of a snag of the inside break there through Laraskas, but we don't do a Schumacher. Have you ever went karting? I haven't been karting probably now in over a decade. It's been a very long time since I last went go-karting. See, it's always when you get those little moments where you just wonder, is that going to be damage? Is that going to set us back for the rest of the afternoon? We get away with it again. And there we go. We have survived 10% of the Monaco Grand Prix. Official Ogrok. I'm probably butchering the name, but thank you very much for the follow. Of course, if you are enjoying the stream and you aren't already, please do make sure you drop us a follow. It would be greatly appreciated. Right, so 10 laps down then. Russell has now got up a 5 second lead. Verstappen is kind of just already getting bored staring at my gearbox. Um, but we're keeping him at arm's length for now. Piastri and Leclerc still aren't matching us, so we're kind of in a good window against them. AI, the field is starting to get a little bit spread out, but we still wouldn't be able to pit now and come out in any clear traffic. Or clear air, even. Don't quite know what clear traffic is. So we've kind of just got to keep suffering, because the soft tyres... The only reason you haven't really gone on the soft tyres here at the start of Monaco is just you can hold the lead into Turn 1. Uh, and we didn't manage that, so now we're, now we're in trouble. Should I buy a cheap PS3? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, F122 just... It didn't even feel fun. It just felt like even when you had a good race, it didn't feel rewarding. It just felt like you survived. Got P16 with 110 AI. If I said that to the girlfriend, she would... Uh, her legs would turn into butter, I reckon. I'm excited for the 2-2 two two Racing League. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, and now we're starting to cause a bit more of a traffic jam. Soft tyres are starting to fall off. We might be in a bit of trouble here. George Russell is opening up the gap. Could I pit and come out ahead of Nick de Vries? That's what I'm wondering. I reckon we might be able to. I reckon we box now onto a set of softs and see how just how far we can take them. Oh, sorry, not softs, mediums. But I'm more than happy to go back to softs at the end of the race. That was close. Yeah, we'll box the end of this lap. Whoa, Verstappen! There you go, that's how much we're struggling. Get into the pit lane. Don't get taken out. And now we've got to pray that we don't get a safety car for the next few laps. Uh, Budget-friendly sim racing setup suggestions, please. Exclamation mark Discord. Join my Discord server. I've got an entire guide in there. Um, for wheel budgets, 200... I think 100, actually. It's 2,000 pounds. Uh, come on, right. We've got to get out ahead of the Toro Rosso. Sorry, the Alpha Tower even, which we will. Uh, that was close. Almost locked at the front. But we do survive, and we live to fight another day. Down in P17, then. So exactly where I expected. Now we've got to try and make some overtakes, chat. And we've got loads more grip than I was expecting. Oh, yellow's out. No, that's not good. Oh, it's an Aston Martin. Lance Stroll in the wall. Pretends to be shocked. Please don't be a safety car. Otherwise, we are in big trouble here. I think what he's done, then, is... We can't actually see it, but I think he's tried to get on the throttle and loop the car around. Let's see if I can show the nose there on Nico. Yeah, he's definitely slowed up around the outside of the hairpin. Oh, uh, he's made a mistake, yes! Oh, well, I wasn't expecting to actually make the move there. I was just trying to find some free track space. But Hulkenberg, yeah, just got a little bit of oversteer on the exit. Had to correct it. And that allowed us the opportunity. So first overtake on the road of the Grand Prix, which is good. That gives me a little bit of confidence. Maybe we can switch him out of Anthony Noakes. Get all over him at the final corner. Look at that with the DRS as well. We'll have a look around the outside. We know how good this Williams is, but we know how aggressive Kevin is. No contact. He cut the corner. He should get a warning for that, but he won't. And there we go. We're back into P14. Right. Come on, Pierre. We've got to... I mean, we've just got to try and utilise these soft tyres as best as possible. Look at the grip we've got all over the back of the Alpine. This one's going to have to be... Ugh, I had to get on the brake slightly. More of a diving manoeuvre. Given the room. We're still side by side on the exit, but we've again made another overtake. Still don't actually think there was any contact there. Tuck back into Slipstream. 
Of course, we know how good that Williams straight line speed is because we're in the other car. Down the inside we'll go. That one was a bit more aggressive, but we have got the car fully in front. We're almost back into the points then already here, which is pretty good. Okay, I'm, I'm pleasantly ahead. surprised that's Three, four clean three overtakes three at Monaco, which probably doesn't happen in most drivers' career, never mind inside four laps. We've got softer, fresher tyres. Well, actually, they're not softer, but they are fresher tyres. Down the inside of the hairpin! No contact. Oh, there was contact on the exit. But we made it through. Well, couldn't do a lot more there. Oh, I thought about Ascend. I thought about doing what I did to Yuki, but thought better of it. Oh, when you can see just how much he's struggling around, though. That worn set of tyres. Come on, get the run. ERS on. we got to make it happen now, though. It's off on. We'll get to the inside. Oh, there we go. We'll make it through. We'll slam the door on him as well on the exit. Make it very clear the position is ours. And we are back into the points then of the Monaco Grand Prix. Want to end the stream at the penultimate lap of the race. Also, they come back next week, do one lap, and then just do another race. I'll end the stream whenever I want. People do have free will. It's completely true. Oh, actually, Hamilton's pit. So there we go. AI now are thinking about it if they're on softs. Hamilton in the pit lane. But yeah, we'll definitely, surely we'll be ahead of George Russell here. Exactly. If someone ends the stream as soon as I bin it somewhere. I've just got to spend a week waiting. Just to go, oh no. Deary me. Right, George is in. And hopefully we are going to be ahead of him as he heads back out onto the circuit then. Here's George Russell. There he is, and we are in front, and back into the net lead we go then of the Monaco Grand Prix. However, not convinced I'll finish this race on this set of tyres. Unfortunately, Ocon hasn't got the jump on him, so I'm going to be the first car that George Russell comes up to. But he is definitely looking to go to the end. I, though, probably am going to try and bolt on another set of the mediums a bit later on. That's my game plan here. Speaking of game plan, we need to try and get a run on Fernando Alonso through the tunnel. I don't know why it's suddenly become our place to make moves today. Never has been before, but I'm not going to knock it too much. As you can just see there, the Aston Martin sparking away just in front of me. We will use the battery, though, get to the inside of the wily old Fox. Oh, and we were clear in front by the time we got the car stopped. We just so I kept it inside track limits. Right, all over the back of Lando Norris, though, as we cross one third distance. Oh, hello. There's an opportunity down the inside. Oh, that one was messy. Oh, he's turned me, or he's attempted to. We might have given Fernand uh, sorry, Lando Norris a bit of front wing damage. He just made a little bit of a mistake. I got down the inside, and then it was kind of like Hamilton Massa back in 2011. It got a little bit scrappy. Come on, I'm a little bit further back from Checo, but I might just be able to get a run. Not quite that time. Thought about it. Thought about sending it, but I was just a bit too far back that I probably wouldn't warrant any space and get put in a wall. So we will go again next lap. Oh, no, I don't want to run here on Checo. Down the inside. No. <sighs> Checo Perez are having the confidence just to swoop around my outside and not give it up, but... Might have potentially meant he's out of the DRS range of the car in front. Sights in. That's going to be one less car we need to worry about overtaking at the moment. Can we get a nice run out of the final corner, though? Yes, we can. Sergio Perez feeling the pressure to the outside of the Red Bull. Oh, give me some room. Thank you. George Russell, new fast lap of the day. But again, I've gone and put another couple of cars between us. Piastri having the race of his season so far up in P2. But Verstappen... Only 11 seconds up the road. Speed run it. I, to be fair, I do actually watch a lot of uh, Dark Viper AU. Um, so, I mean, I'd never pull off any of the strats, but I do know some of the strats. He was kind of one of the reasons, actually, I decided to get back into streaming again, obviously, when I took my little hiatus over the summer. Because um, I was just watching so much of his stuff again. Not live, just on YouTube. I was like, oh, yeah, I need... Oh, no! That might come back to really haunt us. 17 safety cars there. Se Wait, sorry, you've called 17 safety cars. 
That is a staggering number. Like, I genuinely am impressed by that. Two sprint wins. That's your 16 points. <laughs> Are you, like, undefeated in sprint races or something? How do you always survive the sprints but not the real Grand Prix, then? Is your pace quite good then, Dale? And you just crash a lot, or...? Right, come on, actually, I've got to get a run on Oscar Piastri. Whilst we ask the all-important questions. Oh, uh, McLaren's pretty quick down the straights. Uh! Oh! I've kind of barged him out. I'll get a warning for that. Yeah. That was, that was for you, Dale. Oh, yellow. Someone's got issues. Who's that? I think it's Oscar behind me. Oscar Piastri going slow. And I believe he might be out then. So this would be a good time for a safety car. To be honest. Well, actually, I would rather max pits, but... Is that going to be a safety car? He's still not pulled over. I don't quite know how, but... Where is he going to pull over? All things considered. Oscar Piastri. Um... Yeah, he's still... Oh, there we go. He's finally done it. Down at 48. Where Senna had to retire his McLaren all those years ago. But looks like we're not going to get a safety car from it somehow. Oh, George has hit me. Right, there we go. The AI running fast then at the moment. George Russell's just rammed into the back of me. As Verstappen has still not picked from the lead. So I don't know whether George has picked up damage from that. Leclerc's now closing in on the pair of us. But AI strategy is getting very, very weird here. I think that's the thing, of course. You know, if you're a dedicated F1 player, then it's fine. Because, of course, like, obviously for, like, the FIFA guys and stuff, they probably edit at the desk they play FIFA. Like, we, we just can't do that. I mean, unless, obviously, you just mount your wheel to your desk all the time, but... Right, the staff man, I don't think is pitting still, though, chat. So make our way. Nope, the staff man stays out yet another lap. George, again, is going to hit me. So we are going to get in the pit lane then at the end of this one. Don't get done for pit lane speeding. Um, but yeah, let's wait and see then where we really emerge. I'm aiming to be out ahead of Fernando. That's the goal. Get a nice, clean, tidy stop, hopefully underneath us. 2.3, that's pretty decent. Kai, welcome on in. And yeah, we're going to be easily out ahead of Alonso then, so that's been really good. So we've done exactly half and half of what we needed to on that first stint. We've now got to try and undercut Verstappen. So if we get up to Sainz before Max pits, we should get the undercut on the Dutchman. And we'll be quicker than Russell to the flag. So I reckon now we've done the hard work. We've got the jump on Max when he boxes. But George, of course, is still way out in front. We've got three cars now. Lando Norris is causing a bit of a roadblock. Had a car last Sainz to Lewis Hamilton here. So we'll wait and see what we can do. Look at the grip we've got. How can you go from a car length back in towards the hairpin there and still come out on top? Right, can we get Lewis as well out into okay, the tunnel? Yes, we will. Or we'll try, certainly. Going to get a little bit boxed in, though, because I don't know how quick Lando Norris is going to be. Lewis is actually not going to give up on it either. We'll have to give him the room. But we're through. Two cars gathered up and disposed of this lap already. Can we get a third as well? Lando Norris. To make our way down in towards the Raskas once again. You can see we've just got so much extra grip over the AI at the moment. Come on, down the inside wall. Go! Ugh. Had to go for it. Had to send it. Not going to be close enough, though, to send it. That Red Bull, of course, we know how quick that thing is down the straights. Oh! Hit the wall. But we got away with it. No damage either. Oh, you can see Perez is struggling. He knows he's got to try and keep me at bay to help his teammate out, but might be a pretty futile exercise around the outside. A little bit of wheel banging there. I think Checo got out of shape, but we'll make it through. And we're, we're overtaking everywhere at the moment, but we're back into P4 then. We've got eyes on Russell and Leclerc up in front. So you can see there that how much time we've gained over Stappen in just the space of a few laps. He's gone from being a pit of oh, 10 seconds in front of me. We pit, and we've gone and caught up to him all in the space of 10 laps. 
That's how ridiculous the tire is around Monaco the first set, but now we've got to start trying to make moves again. I've got nothing in the way of spare battery either. But we've got to try and find a way. I mean, look at this. Four cars, four teams, all duking it out for the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Down the inside of Charles Leclerc will go, though. And it's Williams again muscling their way through. Tiny bit of contact on the way in, but nothing too damaging to either cars. So it's even going to run on George Russell as well. George Russell has gone from trying to hassle Verstappen for the lead of the Grand Prix to now might lose P2. Careful not to run into the back of the Dutchman, but we'll make it through. Things are getting a little bit scrappy at the moment, but we've got to get past Max and we've got to build up a margin over George there. Nico Hulkenberg's took my fastest lap. Don't think I ever would have seen that coming, but this might actually be the lap that Max pits um, because he's maybe trying to do 24 laps to the end. No, he doesn't. Verstappen's staying out there for yet another one, but he's not going to be in the lead of the Grand Prix for much longer. Side by side as we cross the start-finish line. Surely we can complete this move. You know Verstappen's never going to make it easy. He gives me a car's width and nothing more, but we will take it. Thank you very much. I'm back into the lead then of the Monaco Grand Prix. Something I don't think we've said since lap one this afternoon. Since the start, but 23 laps to go. We've just got to keep trying to build up a margin as best as we can. Start managing things towards the end of the race. Come on, we can win this thing. On 110 AI, we can win something. I don't want to take that second penalty, though, because I'm worried if the tyres fall off towards the end or I stop pushing as much. Verstappen's in, finally. 22 laps to go. Verstappen has finally peeled into the pit lane, then, in this Grand Prix. So, Red Bull... Very, very old strategy today, but with how ridiculous... He's gone hard! What are Red Bull doing? He's done 57 laps on a set of the mediums, and now he's gone hard tyres to the end of the Grand Prix. He's re-emerged behind Lando Norris as well, so he's way down the order. Red Bull aren't known for doing bad strategies, but this weekend they've absolutely fumbled that. What I often find as well, chat at Monaco, is I'm actually more likely to crash when I slow down too much. It's kind of one of the weird little nuances as well of driving around. And it's only something you get at this track that sometimes if you slow down, you actually get stop concentrating as much. And that's when a mistake comes in. So I can't really... I mean, I'm not going to keep pushing as aggressively as I have been. But I can't really afford to sit back and have a Sunday drive towards the end of this thing either. Hey, you gotta you got to get up to speed at your own pace, dead cool. You know, when you feel ready to race at Monaco, then go for it. But I completely appreciate it, of course. You know, hopefully I make it look slightly easier. But I cannot stress enough just how scary this track is. Oh, yellow's out. Someone's got issues late on. Don't be a safety car now. Don't be a safety car now. Surely it's an Alpine. They're not out of the Grand Prix. They're still moving. Please, not a safety car now. I can't cope with that. They're not moving. Well, I don't know what's happened to them. They're just sat in the middle of the road. Ugh! No, come on. Keep it on the island. Ugh. Right, we will have to deal with a lap car then before the end of this, probably. As I honestly thought, my whole race flashed before my eyes then. There's an Alpine just sat there. Going for a one million point turn. Come on, two more laps. Two more laps. All we need here at the Monaco Grand Prix. I don't want to crash. I cannot crash, surely. What a race it has turned into here at Monaco. Strategies really come into it today. Lando Norris is still hounding Charles Leclerc, but Verstappen is taking bags of time out of everyone late on in the day. It won't be enough, though. But can Charles find a way to defend from Lando Norris? In the final couple of laps here of the Monaco Grand Prix. We are just trying to keep it on the island. I honestly was super worried that the penalty was going to make the difference. All things considered. But as we make our way to start the final lap then here at Monaco. As long as we don't do anything stupid. Come on. Bring this car to the flag. We want the win. 
Everyone doubted me. We took pole in qualifying, but one of the weirdest qualifying sessions I've ever had in F123. Probably could have had it by even more had we bought one on the Inters earlier on in the session, but Q3 started right on the crossover period, and somehow, yeah, the track seemed to fall into favour on the intermediate tyres. We got a podium last weekend at Imola that should have been a win, and I honestly thought okay, that race high. was going to be the one that got 18, away this season, but... Seconds. Well, Williams, we are back. We are ready to fight. 110 AI is going to make things difficult throughout the rest of the campaign. But this was always meant to be a difficult challenge, and it doesn't get much more difficult than this. A 100% race here at the Monaco Grand Prix. But as we make our way through this final lap, I think Charles Leclerc's just about done enough to hang on from Lando Norris. But Stappen is right there with them now as well. But in towards the final couple of corners, for the first time... Since 2012, when one, uh, when sorry, Pastor Maldonado won the Spanish Grand Prix out of the final corner, Williams are back on top. Oh, fantastic drive! That's just fantastic, amazing. You deserve that race win. Well I'm done, so mate. tired, man. <laughs> I got so much crap. Mitch with another bit. Power bits as well. Thank you for the follow. We will absolutely take it. Oh. Give me my points. Points, points, points. It's sad that it's been so long since Williams won. Smurf as well with five gifted. I very much appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, DJ, FBI, Matt, Oscar, and Eddie all getting a gifted sub there. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, prediction. 84% of you voted for a win, so even if you did predict that, you're not going to get much for it. But well worth it as well. Oh, I've pressed a button somewhere. I don't know what I've pressed. I'm, I'm staggered I even survived the Monaco Grand Prix, but... We take it. Oh, don't get much more difficult than that. Will I be on YouTube? You probably will. You'll make it to YouTube. Don't you worry. That's the one I wanted. Oh. Got 300 points. Let's go. Deary me. <laughs> First win. Oh, Lando did get Shard as well. So it is a British 1-2-3 in the end. First win. I d honestly never expected to get a win in the first season of this series, but we will absolutely take it there. Big so haul of XP as well. And look at that. Yeah, British 1-2-3 with Lewis down in P8 in the end. Well, after an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. Let's move on to the constructors. And pulling further ahead in the standings, it's Red Bull. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then, the end of the Monaco Grand Prix. And finally, but I say finally, it's only taken us seven races, but we are on top here in the world of Formula One. They're 15 seconds clear of George Russell after almost 100 minutes of racing from the Monaco streets. There, Lando Norris, a fantastic strategy in the end to get P3, snuck it from Charles Leclerc. It must be on the run up towards the line on that final lap there. Max Verstappen even got Charles, so I reckon Charles might have run out of fuel towards the checkered flag there. Perez P6 ahead of Sykes, Hamilton, Ocon, and Fernando Alonso there. And that means bigger picture. We're up to P8. We're now ahead of Fernando Alonso. Um, and you can see, yeah, eight points uh, covering Hamilton, Russell, Norris, and myself there. So all four Brits in a line. Verstappen's still now 18 points clear, though, at the top of the table. Um, Albon down in P14 still. But that's going to mean constructors-wise as well. We're actually now ahead of Aston Martin by a single point as well. We are here to fight this season. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back very, very soon with more of the F1 Williams Road to Glory.